Welcome to Unmasking Humanity 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglin. I'm your host, Joshua. Thank you all for being here today. This is a very, very awesome broadcast. I've already recorded it. It's been shot. The 21 questions, there's actually more than 21 questions. They've all been asked. And even though I recorded this intro earlier, um, I'm re-recording now, even though I probably shouldn't be telling you that but I am. Um, and the reason why is because I did an intro I was happy with and I thought it was great, but I really didn't know that the broadcast was going to exceed my expectations. Every single question that is asked comes with a heartfelt, inspiring, informative, and wisdom-filled answer. I've never had a broadcast like this. And look, I, I do enjoy most of the broadcasts I do, I really do and I enjoy them for their own unique reasons. This one is special. This one inspired me. This one had, it was just had so much common sense. This one had so much information and wisdom and just, it's special. You are, this is gonna be awesome. Uh, Thomas's story is incredible. Um, and those of you that are seeking hope, uh, you're, you're, you're confused about the future and what's about to happen. And you're, you know, maybe even fearful of all the changes, this broadcast is for you. And if you're somebody that's already prepared and ready for the fourth industrial revolution, this broadcast is for you. If you're somebody that's unsure of what you can do next, this broadcast is for you. So my name is Joshua T. Berglund. I am the creator of the World's Mayor Experience and also Media Company in a Box, which is a book, workbook, interactive workbook, if you will, uh, that will teach you everything you need to know about independent media, media literacy, and the tools that you need to know about for your business in the fourth industrial revolution. And by the way, these tools are what all business needs. And you can find that book on any of your favorite bookstores for a much higher price, or you can read the immersive book on my platform at joshuatberglin.com and it's under interactive reading. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, um, and everything I just plugged about myself, I wanna make this clear. Uh, the wisdom that Thomas brings today is gonna blow your mind. And if it doesn't inspire you for the future, I don't know what will. So ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to introduce somebody who's spoken on stages all over the world, is a proud family man, has a true from rags to success story. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Thomas Englero, please welcome him to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. And welcome back to Unmasking Humanity, 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. I am so excited, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce to you Mr. Thomas Englero. Thomas, I got to tell you, I am so pumped about you being here, but the conversation that we had before we even hit record, that yeah. in itself should have been a broadcast, but I am so grateful for you being here. Welcome. Th thank you so much. And, and, you know, it's easy to have a conversation like that when two people are in sync, right? And, and in life, when you meet someone and you're vibrating at the same frequency, everything just flows. And sometimes it leads to marriage, kids, but I'm not hinting to you, but I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's the way life is, but it only happens when you're open, right? Yes. You can't go to come, bring, come to someone and bring all your layers of, look at this, look what I bought, look what I have. This is who I am and things just happen, right? So thank you very much. No, thank you for being here. And I, I said in the opening yesterday, when I was reading about you, I, <laughs> I was so moved and inspired because of the why behind what I do. And mm. so this was a no brainer interview for me. And I'm really, really excited to get into the 21 questions with you. But before we start, well, I would love to know, what are you grateful for today and why? Oh man. <laughs> so for me, that's a very powerful question because I start off every day before I open my eyes, when, when I wake up in the morning, I give gratitude. I say, the first thing I say, I'm grateful for having air in my lungs. I'm grateful 
for another day that I'm alive. I'm grateful for my wonderful kids. Mm. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be me. And then I open my eyes. That's how I start every single day. I don't take anything for granted. When you go through life, you go through so much stuff. Everybody's got their scars and it's not a competition. You, <laughs> you, you become so grateful for just breathing. And when you're there, then the world looks very different, right? You smile a lot more. So that was a heavy question. That's number one. That was a heavy. That's, <laughs> that doesn't even count as the first question. <laughs> oh, like, man. That's the bonus question. Oh, and sometimes God. another bonus question gets slipped in every once in a while because I forget the own format of my show. But okay. you said something yeah. that to me just was like shooting adrenaline in my veins. Okay. Thank you for another opportunity to be me. Yeah. Like you can't even think. You can't ha be have gratitude for that unless if you know your identity and you're living yeah. in it. Yeah. And that is a, such a powerful thing. That is my, of all the answers that you gave, the family, gratitude, the waking up to breathe. But that one for me, to thank the universe, to thank God for another opportunity to be me. That is such a powerful statement. I love that. Thank you for starting this off that great, or, or with such a great, profound gratitude. Now, Thomas, are you ready for your 21 questions? Uh, if that was number zero, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Here's number one. Woo. All right. A towel to wipe the sweat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I may start sweating too, but it's because it's 100 degrees here. But all right. Question yeah. number one. Yes. How has your multicultural background influenced your approach to innovation and technology? Go through walls. Believe in yourself and go through walls. Other people's opinions don't matter. I have something to say. You are going to hear it, and you're going to hear it with my passion. You're going to hear it with my conviction. You're going to hear it with my energy. You're going to hear it with my culture, and you're going to listen to me. I don't care if you don't like me. You are going to remember me. How's that? Oh, my God. <laughs> that was... Okay. I'm going to break the third wall here. That message was for me. The gratitude message and that first answer, that was for me. And, and it may be for other people that are listening right now too. Hmm. But <clears throat> it's inspiring to meet people that are very comfortable in their skin. And those hmm. of us that have struggled with that in our hmm. lifetime know hmm. how important, not just the gratitude statement that you made, but also that first answer. Thank you for that. You're welcome, but I mean, you go, life is hard, all right? L life is hard, all right? And uh, just get over it. Don't be, you're not a victim. You shouldn't feel sorry for yourself. You are blessed to be here. And man, make your moment, M make yourself known, but be respectful and be humble. I am not saying to ever be rude, mm. but... Being a Puerto Rican who's colored, living in Oslo, Norway, where everyone's blonde hair, blue eyes, and six feet tall, <laughs> right? uh, for the last uh, 27 years, there's a lot of hell I go through, and I still go through. The story of just how getting out of the Lower East Side of Manhattan, you know, and the projects, Bruce projects, and getting all the way to be an executive, and the, the amount of stuff I've gone through. The amount of criticism and boxes people have put me in and the amount of no's I've got, the amount of times people close the door, the amount of times people call the police on me. Wow. So what? So what? That's the way you live life. And when you meet people, like I was talking about the frequency connects, that love, cherish that, hold on to that, enjoy that. Because that's what life's about. It ain't always supposed to be about perfect and Mercedes, Rolls Royce, car. Oh, that's stuff you could buy. You cannot buy a feeling of love. When I remember my kids were small, I, I, my little guy, who's now 
six four, six five, much taller than I am. I, long story, but I love him to death. When he was so small in his little diaper, I was doing one of my startups, and I had a rule, and that was I wouldn't eat until I innovated, until I did something nobody else in the world did. That was my rule to start up, running a startup. It was 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I was hungry, man. I hadn't had breakfast because I was sticking to my rule. And I was about to break down in tears because things were not going well. This little guy with his thumb in his mouth and his diaper came walking over to me. He took my hands off my lap, to, off the keyboard, sat down on my lap, put the, my two hands back on my keyboard, and he just wanted to sit on my lap. He saved me. He saved me because I was broken. And that little guy came up with pure love and saved me. He saved my soul. Mm. And at that moment, I realized love. This startup is struggling because I had to be at this hole to experience this little guy to realize that life is about love and not about a startup and making a billion dollars and all that. <clears throat> I got how I have 20 questions left. <laughs> I'm already crying. Oh my gosh. You're happy tears, inspired tears, but gosh, dang. I, I love, I love talking to people like you. Question number two. Yes, sir. It's not really a question, but share a moment when you realized that your work in technology could genuinely change someone's life. Wow. Yeah. Um, so we're going back to 1993, 94, and my girlfriend, we were living together in Brooklyn. She's from Norway, and she moved back to Norway. And uh, the internet back then was dial-up, and I'm that old, so hopefully I don't look that old. But anyways, is that old? And um, the internet back then wasn't, because it was dial-up, it wasn't used as a telephone. We now take for granted that we could do these things, video conferencing, all that. So anyway, the point of my story is that I am the 10th person in the world to ever use the internet as a telephone. And when I was on the phone with the CEO of the company who at 12 o'clock in the afternoon in Israel, they launched a product and five minutes they was on the phone and I was, the, I was the 10th person ever to use the product, including the inside developers. I realized that I was changing the world. I realized that right now I'm enabling anybody in sub-Saharan Africa to somebody in the <laughs> North Pole to talk for free. And I was doing it for love. Here comes love again. At that moment, I said, "This is this is big." So that was that was that was a pretty big moment. Right now, we just take it for granted, but there were people like me who, yeah, we, we saw it coming way ahead of time. And it's people like you. <clears throat> well, it's like I get to give thanks to people like yourself because I wouldn't have a career without the innovations that you brought to the table. I mean, mm -hmm. I had a vision for what I wanted to do as a child, but. Like without the advances in technology that were made available to all, really, because I didn't do it. I didn't build my first media organization with money. Mm -hmm. I did it with none. And I did it with technology that people like yourself helped create. And that understanding of media and media literacy and the technology with me that that enables people to become media companies. For me, that became my platform, my why to help the underserved because that same information and, and, and knowledge helped me. Yeah. And I wouldn't have had an opportunity because one, I wouldn't have been able to go to school. I've, you know, having my disabilities and other things, I would have, I would have struggled in school. I wouldn't have been able to do it. Didn't have money, didn't have access, wasn't going to go to broadcasting school, wasn't going to do a lot of the things, but I was willing to volunteer and serve. I was willing to learn the technologies. Mm. And by little was able to put it all together and just simply gave me an opportunity to monetize my gifts, talents, and intellectual property in ways that I couldn't before. I wasn't getting hired by IBM, wasn't getting hired by Walmart. Like mm. this was the only way for me. Mm. This was the only way was learning these skills and technologies. And because I remember the very first time I did Facebook Live, the very first time 
when it first came out and I was holding my phone straight up and down like this, I'm like, what happens when I do this? Like, wait a second. It looks like a TV show. And little by little started going, well, wait, I could treat Facebook live like a TV show. Then I learned about distribution. Then I learned about product placement and blah, blah. Like little by little, the pieces came together, but it's because of people like you that gave people like me an opportunity. And to take this even further, my whole mission is to serve the underserved. So innovators like yourself have given life to countless numbers of people that you've never met. But I wanna say today, you're meeting one pe one person <laughs> that you've impacted a great deal. So thank you. You're welcome, but I have a correct counter for you. Okay. Tech is a tool. Yes, it is. What you have, you are hungry. Very. And you, you follow that hunger. So a lot of credit and all the credit go to you. And what we're missing in society today is more hungry people. The tool, the tech tool is so easy to use. You push a button, you swipe left, you swipe right. Where's the hunger? Where's the hunger, right? That's what we need. We have AI coming, we have the robots coming. If you're hungry, you will create that next thing that we're going to, right? When I was said 1992, the internet was just web pages and all that. Who could ever thought about cloud computing? <laughs> but Somebody hungry started connecting the dots. So here we are today where we have the iPhone, we have, you know, we have everything. The hungry people will connect the dots and create the next one. So get hungry. So compliment to you. Stay hungry. Just stay hungry. You know, so thank you. But it's the hungry that does it. If I was hungry. You were hungry. That's that's the secret. Be hungry. I'm starving. <laughs> there you go, baby. <laughs> Question three. Yes, sir. What's one myth? about innovation you'd like to debunk through your talks? Yeah, real simple. Innovation sucks. Being an innovator is horrible. <laughs> God is lonely. Yes, it is. <laughs> Man, is it lonely. Uh, it's this, you know, Steve Jobs and World and Elon Musk, they, they make it look so cool right but we have one of them every 20 years or something and the rest of the six seven eight billion people on the planet right so i always tell people how do you know when you're innovating and the answer to that is when nobody likes you then you know then you know you're an innovator why because if you're truly innovating then you are the first person in the world to have that thought or develop that product. And now you have to convince 8 billion people about this one idea that was just born in your mind. Good luck. Nobody's going to like you. That's innovation. There's nothing cool about it. <laughs> it hurts. Yeah. But if you, as we said before, we tie it all together, if you're hungry and you believe in yourself, you said, I have to give birth to this baby. I'll give you another story. My wife, you know, she's she she knows it so well. Um, usually, <laughs> if I ever nudge her at four o'clock in the morning, it doesn't mean usually what people think it means. She knows if I'm nudging her at four o'clock in the morning, waking her up, she means she knows I'm about to quit my job. And I'm about to launch a startup because I cannot sleep. I cannot live anymore until this idea in my mind is born. And so I've done that before, you know, left a wonderful job to give birth to an idea. Being an innovator, it's hard, but it is, you know you're helping the world. So it's okay. And also I'm supported by somebody who's wonderful and believes in me. So I'm, I'm, I'm lucky as hell, right? And, uh, but no, it's not. It's not a beautiful. It's a. It's 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 long. It's 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 hard, man. It's it's hard. But I got so many stories. I don't know which one to throw at you. But when you reflect on your lowest moments, mm -hmm. and you don't choose to feel sorry for yourself, but you go, "What can I learn from this? What am I doing wrong?" When you fall to that one, what am I doing wrong? This is my fault. Mm -hmm. Wow, you you are going to just take off from there, and that took me a long time. That took me many, 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 many years to have that epiphany. And 
now is a default. Yeah. So good. So good. <clears throat> Next question. Yeah. Go for it, Joshua. Can you tell us about a time when embracing your inner nerd led to a surprising opportunity or solution? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a good one. Um, the only patent I have, uh, sorry, I only have one. Um, I was uh, using Microsoft Word and uh i you know how you you just hold, hold your mouse down and you highlight something right yeah so i highlighted somebody's name and i go wait a minute if i clicked on the left mouse and i get highlight why can't i click on the right mouse and when it gives you a choice of copy paste and all that why is it the, with the button saying call it should i should be able to call this person yeah and so that that was my patent so i actually went to microsoft and I had a funny, I, I, I went through up all the hierarchies in Microsoft and I got to uh, the guy who ran the team for Microsoft Office and I said, yeah, I would like to have the source code for Office because I want to integrate a telecom network into the guy, no, Microsoft Word. The guy laughed his head, a whole room of people <laughs> were just laughing and then echoes of laughter. I'm like, hello, what, what did I say something wrong? But I was young back then, you know, young is stupid, but you know, they respected where I was going. And eventually, we think that we figured out a way without doing it in the source code how to connect it all. And so, my one patent is that within Word, PowerPoint, and even Excel, you would right click and you could launch a phone call. So, that's kind of awesome. Because then, if you could do a phone call, then you could just send an email too. Never did got that far, but uh, so I, 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 just to me, it was it was just one of those intuitive thoughts. It's like, amazing, though. I mean, it's. It, I love the subtle, the the little subtle things that are so revolutionary, like to me. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so that's that's the answer. So I'm I'm proud of it. The the patent is still there. And no, nobody uses the service. Telecom Italia Mobile actually launched it, and they did extremely well. They made millions, but I didn't get anything off of that. Um, I'm just happy that uh, the Italians love my idea. <laughs> Well, I'm American. I like your idea too. But. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and one, one American. There we go. Plus one. <laughs> next, next question. Yes, Joshua. How do you balance the excitement of tech's future with the with the nostalgia of the past in your personal life? Say it one more time, please. Okay. How do you, How do you balance the excitement of tech's future with the nostalgia of the past in your personal life? Yeah, that's easy. So the answer to that is every time I get excited about the future and what's coming, I, based on the past, I always know it's going to take a hell of a lot longer than because I always think it's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> it's so true. Because just like, you know, right clicking, I should be able to make a phone call. It seems so simple. Then when I connect dots and I go, oh, well, AI and the robots and all that, nah, it's going to take a while. Everything in tech takes a while. But when all those inflection points meet, it all of a sudden feels like it happens overnight. But no, it took a hell of a long time, you know? Sure. Um, yeah, like the first day of dial, you know, internet with the dial-up modems, it took us a long time. We needed broadband before we got to video conferencing. Though you, we saw video conferencing back when we were 14.4 modems, if you remember all that days. You know, so uh, I know I've been here for a while, but um, even though you see it, it takes a while. Mm. So start positioning yourself, start talking to the right people, try to find the networks. It's going to take a while. Yeah. Good answer. What's the most profound piece of advice you've received that has shaped your journey in the tech world? Don't... Um... Just just because one plus one equals two, don't believe it. In other words, just because this has been proven to be done this way and that's the way that's the standard, do it your own way. There's always a third door. There's the innovation comes when people don't accept that water must flow downhill. There's the beauty. That's the way you got to think. 
just because everybody's doing it that way doesn't mean you have to do it that way. It's a beautiful thing. I've got chills. All <laughs> of, I'm like, you're pulsing through me because instinctively when I see the crowd going one way, I'm like, yeah, hey, I'm going over here. I'm yeah. going to be by myself. But I, 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 there's just, you know, when the masses go a place, there's a reason why, and I'm not falling for it. So, that's my trigger. I'm telling you, when the sheep go that way, I'm instinctively I'm going the other way. That's the word it, I was going to use. I didn't want to use it, but yes, she got you. I, <laughs> no, but it's it's true. No, mm -mm, no way. You know, when social media, TikTok, Instagram, when they all explode, you know, I I look over. I go, okay, let's go that way. Good to know, but there's a problem there. There's a problem when that happens, right? So yeah. What, not to get off in the weeds, but I'm going to throw yeah. this out here just for fun. Sure. I'm on those other platforms because that's yeah. where I share my marketing clips, but I will never put my intellectual property on social media ever. Um, and I, and, and to me, what's happening, because we are in a creator's economy, these big platforms are now trying to incentivize people to come hang out there. That's why LinkedIn has games now. You can play video games on LinkedIn. They don't want you to leave the platform. Why? You you can go you can get monetized on TikTok you can get monetized on YouTube but the problem is you're getting paid pennies on the dollar of what you're worth. Mm. I am all for independent media, self hosting, owning your intellectual property, and distributing mm. from your multimedia platform. So when I see these other platforms, I'm going, this is just a new form of slavery. This is the yeah. record industry on steroids. It's a it's a nightmare version of the record industry, yeah. and everyone's willingly playing along i see some of those brilliant artists on the planet wasting their talent all over social media for likes and comments. i know, I know. shocking yeah. to me let well, me add something i yeah. think you you you, you per perfect i will add into a different platform please a ai oh so yeah. chat gpt on the mobile phone maybe people don't know it but when you download ChatGPT and use it from your mobile phone, you have to go deep within the settings, privacy, and all that. And you have to uncheck the box that is checked by default that says whatever you contribute, whatever question you ask to ChatGPT, OpenAI, the company that owns it, they own all your um, intellectual property. This is the, it's the same thing you're just saying, but they did it by default in AI because they learned from the past, right? And everybody's using AI, people going, oh, I could take my thesis in school. I could. They're just consuming the world. They're saying, what are you doing at three o'clock in this location? You're asking this question. I know what you're doing. They're building patterns. But remember, they, they have an AI that could build patterns and then they then know what, you're, what you potentially would do with 92.7% certainty tomorrow at three o'clock. Where are you going to be with who or whatever? So the same thing is being repeated with AI. Hundred percent, yeah. Hundred percent. I'm glad that you added that. That's perfect. Next question. Uh, this is a good one, or, yeah. or a fun one. If you could create a new tech initiative for youth empowerment, what would it be, and why? I love that question. It would be. It's real simple. Um, I want. I want to create a. A platform where we just talk. That's it. Why? People are so lonely. Yeah, man. I mean, after COVID, we've lost the ability to communicate with each other. We were told we're not allowed to shake hands. And then after COVID, people are just don't know how to not touch, but what, how do you get close to how we forgot how to be human? Mm -hmm. And I look at the statistics now and it seems like, especially men, men were not supposed to be talk soft with one another. Who the hell said that? <laughs> you know what I mean? I dare you to correct me and tell me you you talk soft. I'll beat the <laughs> 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 Just because I talk soft doesn't mean I'm soft. That's completely different. Yeah. Men need love too. Mm. And men need love from other men. Mm -hmm. Men, women, we all need to be heard. We all need to reconnect. Like we're talking about frequencies before. Yeah. So I would love to create a platform where people are just comfortable. And, and it's just that stage one. The next stage is 
can we meet someplace that's also safe and I get comfortable with people again and reintroduce people to people? This is something I'm very much thinking about. Like, how can I use tech to do something so non techy Yeah. Because it's, what, because it's what we need. You just described the world's mayor experience, <laughs> what I'm building. There we go. Yes, because it all the technology, like one of the traps that we have, like for all the, like for instance, with the way I use AI took the place of eight people that I would have to hire. There you go. Yep. Right. But the trap of that is, well, now I can do a hundred times more work, or I can do the work I would normally do that's very productive, and then I go enjoy my life, get involved in the community, serve, be around people again. Like we have this really unique opportunity to take advantage of the technology. Yeah, but then go live our lives again and get away from the nine to five bull crap that's going away. That's going away anyway. Yeah, like we have an opportunity to help rebuild our communities. And yes. one of the reasons I'm passionate about media literacy is because it it one it installs healthy communication. It encourages that, not yeah. not just deciphering between what's fake news and not, but like it's it's about communication. It's about giving people opportunities to live in their their gifts, talents, and uh, and use their intellectual property to make a living, but also that means you live in purpose. And when you're living in purpose, you don't have time to be a racist douchebag, to be a homophobe, or to exactly. go out and cause trouble because part of your purpose is serving the community. Exactly. It's, it's using your gifts to help people, to provide value. When you live like that, you can't help but be, to be happy and to look out for people. You so know, I love what you're saying. I love it. You, you, we are in so much in sync, and we, we just like met like uh, less than twenty four hours ago. Yeah, you know, living with a purpose is so important because I'm adding. Let's add the robots, right? Which are yeah. coming right after the AI. When I mean after, I'm thinking three months from now. You'll start hearing <laughs> I saw one. I saw one on the way home from the gym today. But anyway, go ahead. Here we go. Robots. I mean, if you look at the Gen Zs, they're going, oh, I want the robot. That way I don't have to work. I could just sit, sing drinking my latte. I'm not I'm picking on Gen Z, but that's okay. They, they make the most noise. The robot that takes, that's doing the manual task, that's out there in the field working 24 hours a day, the robots that are doing all the manual stuff, it's not for us to be lazy. It's for us to spend more time fulfilling our purpose. Those words are perfect that you use. That's what it's all about. The AI is giving us back our time. The robots giving us even more time, but not just back our time, our youth, because our bones and muscles and joints won't be as hurt. And we won't be taking risks like working working the North Sea, you know, fulfill your purpose. Wonderful. You nailed it. Absolutely. I agree with you a thousand percent. Amazing. Next question. Yes. Describe a challenge you faced while advocating for diversity in tech and how you've overcome it. The challenge I faced was um, I was at IBM and I was the uh, speaker, global speaker for AI for IBM, for IBM Watson. And uh, the challenge was that um, we had no female speakers. So I was asked to keynote the biggest uh, IT conference in uh, Oslo. And I said, no problem. I told three of the three of the women in my office, young, uh, they, they're right out of college, they're like 25 years old. I said, you three are coming with me on stage. And we're going to do the keynote together. I'm going to introduce the subject. I'm going to stand back for the mic. And then number one comes up, number two comes up, number three comes up. Then I come up and go, thank you very much. And we're done. And you three have done a keynote. <laughs> this, uh, I, can't, I can't put names and stuff. The leader group of that organization freaked out. I got zero support. So I had to agree that if it went horrible, I would lose my job. And I said, done, I put my job on the line. It went fantastic. Those three young ladies from that point on were asked to do speeches. And to this day, they all their careers have gone through the roof and they're well-spoken. But I remember those three, they lost sleep. I had to train them and all that stuff. I'm not taking any credit. All I'm saying is that give people a chance. Yes. That's it. And a lot of people don't believe in themselves. And I'm a basketball coach too. And the key of the basketball coach is you see what that player doesn't see of themselves yet. And that's what you're yelling at them. You're saying, I already see you doing it. You put that belief in them. And that what you do with your colleagues. And that what I did with these three young ladies. 
and yeah i'm very proud of that that's inspiring i love that i yeah. love it what's one technology trend you're following right now that you believe will have a significant impact on humanity now oh, the robots the robots is bigger than we could possibly imagine because it's going to happen as fast as fast as we can imagine um the fortune 200 companies in the world all have sent not all their data but you know manuals on like you fix a, a boiler you turn this turn that they sent all their manuals to all to many of the top five robot companies and so these robots are being built right now and within the next one to two years we're going to have tens of thousands of robots doing the manual job of the top fortune 200 companies we're going to have robots everywhere humanoid robots and also robots that don't have the shape of a dog just something that's doing something i'm watching it because i'm worried about humanity mm -hmm. it's going to come so fast that if you don't have time to reflect on you you're going to take this thing as the world is coming to an end the sky is falling chicken little to right? so yeah i'm watching this because it's people going yeah i heard about robots no you don't understand it they're, they're here and they're backed by 50 billion dollars and that's only today mm -hmm. so that's 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 something i'm watching because not because of the physical thing because i'm worried about our souls yeah you're right and I, I, it's so important to have people like yourself out there speaking about this because, you know, I don't believe in living in fear. Um, no. I mean, obviously things get scared, but living in fear, like when is it ever, fear is the biggest liar I've ever seen in my life. And that's yeah. just what I've experienced in my own life. And, you know, maybe I've had a lot of things I should have been afraid of, but that's the case. There's a common sense approach to all of this. There's an opportunity available for all of us. There's an opportunity available for people that don't want to do anything at all because there's going to be universal basic income for you. Yeah, right. I don't want that because God, I didn't. I don't want to sit back and do nothing. I have gifts and talents that I want to express, and exactly. we are stepping into this world right now where it benefits creators. Like we, the creator created us to create, and we have this amazing opportunity right now to step into that. Yep. But if we're looking at, oh my God, it was my job. Did you really want that job to begin with? Really? Definitely. Did you really Definitely. want it? Right now, there's an opportunity available for all. And so I love the common sense, the education approach. But mm -hmm. to your point, I'm worried about humanity too, because most of humanity that I see is scared out of their minds. Yeah. And they shouldn't be. So. Yeah, well, well said, and I could spend another 10 minutes, but I'll, <laughs> we, we're in sync again. It's amazing. Yeah. No, if I, one, one comment is fear. It hasn't happened. What are you afraid of? And it probably won't happen. That's right. It's Except for the coming. robots. They're definitely coming. <laughs> that's, that's not fear. That, that's, that's math. <laughs> that is definitely happening. No, that That is happening so fast that... Um, it is your freedom. And I, if anybody listens to this, this, listen, when the robots come, that is your freedom. What do you want to do with your freedom? What fulfillment of your dreams, of your, your, your thoughts, of your childhood that you haven't had a chance to fulfill, the robots will give you the freedom to do that. That's the way you should take it. Don't take it with fear. Take it as a blessing. I just isolate that clip right there. That's perfect. Love it. All right. Next question. Yes. How do you maintain your well-being and mental health in an industry that's constantly evolving and demanding? Uh, every time everything goes to hell and things change, why I fall asleep, wake up the next morning and start laughing. <laughs> All right, happen again. Okay. It's just humor. <laughs> just just laugh it off. Just it's funny. It's the nature of the beast. Tech will always disrupt tech. It's funny. Uh, and then how do I keep my uh, keep going with the whole thing? Uh, training, exercising. I like to exercise in the morning. I don't like exercising after work because my body's too accelerated into sleep mode. Uh, I like getting up, up early and doing something, you know, biking, running, whatever. Uh, yoga or uh, staring at the sky, uh, moving. Yeah, but smile and laugh it off. Disruption is a good thing. That means more opportunities are coming. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, it's all good. I like that.
like but you have a bunch of one-liners that are just amazing <laughs> <laughs> next question yeah if you could go back in time oh. what pivotal tech event would you like to witness or change I would have loved um, Steve Job. He has a there's this uh, on YouTube. There's a video of him giving the speech about um, Apple, where he's announcing Apple, and he talks about nothing about technology. He just talk about how we're the spirit and the soul of a society. I would have loved to have been in the front row and just to be immersed and feel that. Because when I am down and I cannot be creative, I love turning on YouTube and watching that speech again. Because it's, it's, it's about being part of something. His words are magical. It's, it's, um, it's the best tech speech I've ever heard. And it's zero tech. So yeah, I would have loved to have been there. Oh, I, I would have been amazing. That would have been amazing. Yeah. Uh, and he was a special guy. He wasn't perfect. None of us are. But <clears throat> wow. Yeah. I would have loved him in there. That would have been special. That's a good answer. What's the most unexpected feedback you've received after a motivational speech? And how did it how did it affect you? The yeah, the feedback was no feedback. I was shocked. I've given, I mean, high energy motivational speeches. Nothing. 450 people, 800 people, 1,000 people, nothing. I was shocked. Two years later, I was on the subway uh, here in Oslo. It's called the Tebon. And I'm standing there, and the guy across from me is staring dead at me. So after about a few minutes, you know, I go into New York mode because if you stare at me that long as a New Yorker, something's about to go down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy starts walking to me. I make a fist and I'm like, I'm ready. No big deal. And he goes, You Thomas Singlero? And I'm like, and Now we're in Norway. So I'm going, Okay, relax a little bit, you know, slap off. And uh, I go, Yes. And he goes, I was at your motivational speech at blah, blah, blah last year. I go, oh, so now I'm relaxing. I'm like, oh, great. He goes, no, you don't understand. The day after that, your speech, I went to work and I quit my job. I moved back home to India and I started a company. I'm now making, what is it, $300,000 a year and growing. And he goes, I owe it all to you. Can I give you a hug? I just started crying. He started crying. We hugged each other on the train. Sometimes no feedback, especially after motivational speech, means you've maybe I've touched a few souls. Yeah. That's a good reminder. There's a lot of speakers out there, a lot of even people that do, you know broadcast and they don't get that immediate feedback and they're like oh they have no idea if they're making an impact or not and and i it, it, sometimes people get in their head and they lose confidence and they quit and i ran into that situation myself i just felt like i wasn't having impact and it's like god it's like talking to crickets right now yeah and yeah, it, 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 it it messed with my head and i almost quit and as soon as i was like done mentally i got a message from someone and in that message it reminded me it's about the one it's not about the masses it's not about the millions even though i have those big and i trust me i have giant ambitions we all do Ultimately, it's about the one <laughs> it is may i share one more story please do so i have a podcast as well uh soul of innovation and very personal podcast where i talk about this personal stuff Anyway, <clears throat> the podcast, and it's just me on the podcast. I don't ask anybody to interview. I just, when I'm touched, when I feel that I have an epiphany that I want to share with the world, I share it. Anyway, doing a podcast that way is a very lonely thing because there is no feedback on the podcast when it's just you. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing it for seven years, and 
you know, I hadn't gotten an email from any listener in months and anything. I was like, is anybody even listening? You know? And then all of a sudden, one evening, I got an, uh, a message on Instagram. And it was a video from a mother in the Ukraine. This is many years, a few years ago before the war. And she goes, she goes, he can only go to sleep listening to your voice. Mm. That's what she wrote in the text. And then I played the video. And I'm watching on my mobile phone. Her son is 12 years old. He was in his pajamas, laying in his bed. And my podcast was playing. And she said, I'm a single mom. He doesn't have a father. And your voice puts him to sleep every night. I hold on to that one. I hold on to that one. You know, what I love about you is that you're you are not afraid to be in your heart. I love it. I I, I true to form in your gratitude and what you said all the way through. Like you are not afraid to speak from your heart. I love it. I'm a heart speaker. It gets me in a lot of trouble, but <laughs> I, I I love it when I'm around other people who do it. It just we means a lot. Thank you. I don't even know if I say thank you. Look, we have one life to live. I have this moment now. I'm going to give you me. Mm. That's who I am. And that's it. Very simple. Not, nothing more than that. You're doing it too. <laughs> Next question. Yes. In your opinion, what's the key to making complex tech concepts accessible and exciting to the general public? Simplify the story down to the point that anybody understands you within a few seconds. Done. That's brilliant. All right, next question. Wait a second. Bear with me. I just uh, I I scrolled down too far. Okay, Jimmy Christmas. Forgive me. This is. I should have like music playing right now. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Can you share an experience where you connected with someone with a completely different background through technology? Through technology. Hmm. Is, isn't that every day? Yeah, pretty much. It was, it was right. an easy question. Yeah. It's, um, we talk to people all over the world as always we don't travel that much right especially after covid so i mean that's like an everyday thing um but when you have to define the word connect so there's business connections which is good afternoon how are you and then there's things like the way we're talking yeah let's go with that let's answer it through like a real connection kind of like besides me because i'm just going to go out on a lemon here and say we've connected but yeah. like another connection like this that was very unexpected or unlikely It happens quite often because I always talk this way. Yeah. And on business calls, people are expecting the, you know, <laughs> right? And I'm talking this way. Uh, matter, okay. Um, about four weeks ago was the last time I was on the phone with a uh, um, person from Google. And um, we were discussing uh, my startup being part of their cloud platform for startups first 45 minutes was about her her insecurities why is she not married and she goes i did not expect to have this type of a phone call and i was like okay why don't we have more of those phone calls I mean, after you have that conversation, if you're, that's the beginning of the conversation of the relationship you're having with that person, I think you now trust each other. And I think you can do tremendous business together. So shouldn't that be the way we do business? Hmm. Right? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That is really good. Huh. Next question. Yeah. What's one personal habit or routine that you credit for your success in the tech industry? A habit? Oh, this is a strange answer. I don't think it's, okay. Because I grew up in the Lower East Side of New York, 
back in the days when there were gangs and we got beat up a hell of a lot and I have my fair shares of beatings. Um, when I am faced with adversity, especially in the tech industry, because everybody's smarter than everybody else and everybody's they got egos beyond belief, um, they have no idea that when they come after me, come after me with their uh, testosterone, man, they don't know what they've just ignited. They have no freaking idea. I don't give a I don't give a crap that you have a billion dollars. I'm about to pound the shit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're messing with. So um, yeah, nah. Just because you're wealthy or you've been on the cover of some magazines, I got a lot to teach you. Yeah, I do too. People pay for those placements. It's very rarely that you're selected. Here's a magazine cover. Most people pay for those opportunities. So it's not a big deal when you, oh, by the way, social media audience, when you get jealous, when you see people posting about their magazine covers, they pay for it. They paid for it like they paid for their podcast views. Don't get jealous. Stay in your yeah. own lane. And you, by the way, let's 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 put it out there for social media because I just found out about that. So you can go on eBay and pay them fifty dollars to get ten thousand subscribers. I just found out because I get in trouble. I met some guy who I was like, "How the hell do you have fifteen thousand uh, <laughs> connections on, on LinkedIn?" He has no personality. I'm not making fun of him. He knows he doesn't have personality. He even tells me, "Thomas, I'm not a good looking guy." Right? He goes, "I don't write. You don't write. You don't publish anything on LinkedIn. You have fifteen thousand followers." I figured it out. He went on eBay. So yeah, people who are popular is all bull. People who are famous, I'm not calling them all bull. Judge people by talking them to yourself, yourself one on one, and then you can make your own judgment. Other than that, yes, yes, it's, it's all makeup. It, it, it yeah, and I have screenshots of. I'm I, I'm not going to call anyone out, but the people that you see ranked in the top. They, they buy views too. They buy views too. There's a, a reason why they do it. It's not just for the fame because even paid views can earn them money. That's yeah. why. And so, but don't, like I really do want to stress that, especially since you compliment it. It's hard not to be competitive because we're competitive, I think, in our nature, or at least I know I am. Yep. And it's hard not to see that and go, I want to do that too. But when you're fighting against something that's fake, like, you're not really fighting. Your only competition is yourself. Yep. And I think that's another reason why focusing on the one yep. is better than the millions. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the, that way you know that the real message is being delivered. Exactly. Let me help the viewers. So, uh, you know, the, uh, they're always pushing drop shipping, <laughs> drop shipping for Amazon, right? And yeah. it's okay to be tantalized for that brief moment because that's called good marketing. Compliment yeah. them on that. But like you said, stay laser focused on you and your agenda and go, good job. You guys marketed real well. Okay, what was I doing? That's it. It's okay to be distracted. There's nothing wrong. That's not weakness. That's good marketing. And then go right back to what you're doing. Good job. Well said. 100%. 100%. Beautiful advice. Mm. Next question. Yes. If you were to create a podcast about the human side of tech, what would be your opening episode be about? Stop listening to this podcast and go for a walk. <laughs> I was I used to tell people when I had my when I before I started getting in trouble on social media for talking about things that certain people didn't want me to talk about. Um I used to tell my audience to stop listening to me and go take action. Like I would see the same people hopping on live every hmm. episode i'm like you're not you're i don't want fans like i'm saying these things for you to go <laughs> apply them and go away like i don't want to see your like thanks i guess i need the ego boost but go do something with this like i don't want yeah. you hanging on to my every word every day that means you're not exactly. doing anything yeah exactly <laughs> i get i get people who tell me you know thomas i listen to your podcast while i'm walking my dog every night and stuff right and I'm like, uh, thank you. But when you're walking a dog, you should only be listening to the ruffling of the leaves, the dog panting, and you should be connecting with the universe. You shouldn't be listening to me. Thank you. But please take the headset out and just enjoy nature and your dog. 
so good. I love your first podcast. I'm going to subscribe already. All right. <laughs> Next question. Yes. How do you envision the role of AI in fostering global communication and understanding? Fantastic. Well, because AI speaks multiple languages, it will allow it will bring down that barrier. So people won't be uncomfortable due to language differences, um, cultural differences. AI won't be able to fix because we're all culturally different, uh, especially humor. That's very cultural. So you've got to be very careful with that. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, uh, some of the things I've said, I'm sure I pissed off a whole bunch of people, but I'm sorry. To everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, AI will take away that first inhibition and it'll allow for if you allow yourself to be seen when you communicate the other person will reciprocate regardless of what initial mother language they're talking about and it'll make that bridge much easier i think so yeah that's good yeah uh, next question yeah what's a piece of outdated tech you'd bring back for a day just for the your enjoyment of it yeah pong <laughs> i would have gone too i would bring back stupid boing 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 i would bring it back for a day for the world because we then we all be gratitude we would appreciate where we came from that's true if we all played that for a while we go god this is where we came from how many hours did all of us spend back in the day? That I mean, you know, my mother beat the crap out of me and my brother on that one. <laughs> um, and everything else, but Hung would make us all humble. So there's something there's something to that. That or dial up. <laughs> 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 no, I don't think so. AOL comes back. We all have to go <laughs> dial up again. Oh God, that'd be humbling. Uh, <laughs> Not again, please. That sucked. <laughs> that was, that was cool. expensive. Let's get back into that one. Go ahead. Seriously. All right. Go next ahead. question. Yeah. Share a light bulb moment from your career when you realize the power of speaking to inspire. I was on the stage in uh, Austria. Then it was Bad, Bad. Oh, I forgot the name of the place. Bad Reichenhaus, some hall in the Austrian Alps with uh, Ericsson. And I was doing a speech. And the guy before me, also a colleague from Ericsson, he praised Cisco, and they were our competitor back then. And he just lifted him up so high. And said, Oh, we got to worry about them. They're killing us and all that. Anyway, it was my turn to speak. And I was so pissed off <laughs> that, that when I went up on the stage in front of all the hundreds of people to speak, I just went ballistic. And I was so angry. I took my pat. I didn't mean to. And I said, The hell with Cisco. They should fear us. And I was like, Damn, I just started this job. What the hell did I just say? everyone stood up and started clapping and banging on the tables and i said oh wow and i just kept on going and at that moment i said wow authentic passion is the most powerful thing mm. i love that yeah if you could implement one global tech policy what would it be and how would it benefit society I would put no rules to AI because I want, and the reason why I would do that and how it benefits society is I want the creativeness of people to come back. If we all have AI, we all at the end of the day are equally as smart. True. Okay. So therefore the difference is your creativity. I want people to, if, you, if everybody has a Tesla, if everybody has a Lamborghini, so what? It becomes so what? Mm. If everybody has AI, so what? Let's get, like you were talking about before, your purpose that you were talking about. Let's get people back to that mindset 
And within 24 hours, 48, one week, this world would be insane. The party would be in incredible. Endless food, endless love, endless laughing, endless joy. Just to reignite the soul of humanity. God, that's a good answer. The last question. We have one more question. Okay. Like This went by way too fast for me. I've enjoyed every bit of this. So have I. <sighs> All right, last one. Here we go. Okay. Normally, I'm exhausted, and like, I, I think I have like a hundred more questions I could ask you, but we'll go with this twenty twenty first question. Okay. Finally, as a thought leader, what's the one question you wish more people would ask about the future of technology? That's a tough question because um, I, is it, I'm piggybacking on what I just said in that the future technology is no tech. I mean, but what I mean by that is that technology will be so embedded that we don't see it as tech. Mm. So people aren't asking the right questions because they see everything as tech. So people should be asking, what should I do when there is no tech? And then that goes back to everything we talked about, finding your purpose and all that. So no one asks me about that when tech disappears because tech is embedded everywhere. Who am I? I wish people would ask me that question. Oh, my gosh. I was not expecting that answer. That is great. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. All right. Well, you've survived 21 questions, Thomas. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, Wow, that was amazing. That was so good. You. you did not disappoint at all because I walked <laughs> into this interview very, very excited. I'm not like, super excited about all of them. I'm just like excited. But yeah. there's some that I get geeked out about. And then, you know, like, does it live up to expectations? Uh, mm. This exceeded my expectations and I'm beyond grateful for you. Um, I would like to give you the opportunity yes. to have the final words. And in those final words, you can say whatever you want to say. But also, please plug anything and everything you want to plug. Wow. Okay. So I'll start with the plug, and then I'll end with the final words. So uh, if you'd like to know more about me, you can go to my website, which is uh, anglero.com, A-N-G-L-E-R-O.com. That's my website. Um, I have my podcast, which I spoke about before, which is the Soul of Innovation podcast. Is free as all podcasts are, and that's my gift to you and humanity. Um, and the uh, project I'm working on now is to come is uh, AI humanity. I'm traveling around the world speaking about that to help to re reduce the number of nurses and doctors who are leaving because they're scared of technology. I'm trying to bring them all back. So that's that. And then I will leave it with this word to everybody. Notice my pause. I pause because I want to be here and I want to be present at this moment because I want to give you everything I have. I want you to give everything you have to everyone in your life. You only have this moment and we can't go back in time. Love people through your words. Love people through listening. You make a difference when you are you. You do not make a difference when you're acting like everybody else. Go forth and spread beauty and light. Be who you are. And I love you. And thank you, Joshua. <laughs>